I had two of the best Gods Unchained players review my tournament match, and they both missed the game-winning line. We're going to watch my round two of the Superb Owl 3 tournament right now, and I'm going to pause the video when we get to the crucial line, give you guys a second to see if you can find the winning line that they couldn't find. I'm also going to splice in some of their commentary throughout as they are the best players in the game. They did have some very smart things to say about the rest of the gameplay that I might have missed. All right, here we go. We are in game number one. It's a best of three. You got to win two games, two different gods. I'm leading off here with Control Magic. He's playing what looks to be some aggro war. We get to go first, which is always a good thing. And we don't want to use our pip yet, because we only have one. We go ahead and pass here. We love that we have the time bomb in hand. Opponent plays two creatures. We've got a time bomb. Looks promising. Slap that time bomb whenever there's more than one creature. It's always the rule. Yeah, the time bomb is... This is the ideal matchup for time bomb. You love time bomb against aggro war. <laughs> There you hear from the top two players in the game. H. Payne is the disembodied voice and fake muse. We love the time bomb. We get to make a two for one trade here, which is always a good thing. We trade off one time bomb and it's gonna kill two of their creatures. We trade it into the three two. It's gonna kill the two two as it kills the weakest creature, hits the weakest creature for two. And we can use our star shard bolt to clean up his board. So feeling pretty good here. We still have our pip. We got a decent hand. We got this the shaped blast, the guild enforcer. Don't love the healing elite charge uh, plunking up my hands here, but that's a big turn from him. He hits me for a lot of damage. Gets a relic equipped, has a 3-3 three, three with god blitz and the 3-2 out there already. We could put the guild enforcer out, but if he's able to clear it, then we're just dead. Like maybe he plays Red Fume Serum runs me over. Uh, there's no way we can leave this thing on board. Another round. They gotta go. We clear him up. We gain a bunch of favor. He's down to one card in hand. Now he's got two. Another God Blitz Imp hits me with Slayer. And at this point, it's pretty ridiculous. I'm down to 14 health already. Not looking good in game number one. So... We could kill it with the Worm Breath or something, but <sighs> could make an argument for the Unbound Flames. I like slam down this Guild Enforcer. Got three attack. Imp's got three health. Let's see what he's got. We've got that Shaped Blast, so we're feeling decent. He trades off the Imp, and now our Shaped Blast is awkward. Safeguard Incantation is huge. Might actually save my life. Protected End Ward. He's just going to try and hammer me down with Slayer. So definitely glad to see that Safeguard. Here we have an awkward turn, though. We could trade, but... It's not really I, I like Worm Breath and the Oryx here. Worm Breath, the like... Oryx, go face. And then go face. Yes. Because he obviously doesn't have another round in his hand. He has no way of getting through. I don't think, I think you want to make him have something to get through the Guild Enforcer. Because if you trade your Guild Enforcer right now, he's getting through no matter what. But he has proven that he has nothing in his hand right now. So I think Worm Breath is correct here on the Oryx and go face and make well, him find an answer Well, trading the Guild Enforcer doesn't break through automatically here because you'll have one health remaining. And if you use Worm Breath to kill the other minion, then in theory, he'll have two 1-1 one -one minions, which might not be enough to get through the Guild Enforcer. Which is exactly oh, yeah, but, what I'm going to do okay, here. Yeah, so there. I, I would have done it the other way. I would have just went face. Because now if he peels one off, he has he gets favor for the second attack. But we'll see how this goes. If he has red fume or another round here. Uh, or that. Cavern Brawler yeah. does get through the Guild Enforcer. Granted, his opponent could have forced the trade. But he would not have gotten the like, two attacks in with the 1-1s. One yeah, so yes. The issue. Yeah, so that's why I didn't like that uh, attack last turn. Fair enough. So we have Tracking Bolt here to kill both 1-1s. Also got Safeguard and the Rune of Sight in the Sanctum. And does he play Safeguard this turn? 
Uh, if he's playing Safeguard, he should play it first. So you draw the card first. I'm assuming he's playing that. So a little Drawing bit of operations is thing. Definitely the rank nine meta here. Oops. Always draw last in rank nine. Yeah. All right. So he's going to go with Runa's side. Again, he's ending the turn with all of his card draw. It would appear I'm out of Yeah, not smart. But we needed to cycle through here. I was gonna, I was gonna track both those guys no matter what. So whatever, it's fine. So here he's got the blade of sticks. Hits me with the god power. She gets rid of everything that that safeguard was protecting. For three health, we don't have a frontliner. Incredibly tilty. awkward for Copper as he has no real good lines here. Uh, how do you like empowering the crystal tech instead of just playing? Two crystal techs. I, I think you have to empower it here because you have to find second safeguard or you're just dead three turns. I was desperately looking for safeguard. I actually like the first C here. Because, I mean, you're not getting a healing next turn anyway. You can play the second one. Whoa, huge mistake by Magneto. He misses a god power opportunity by playing the ether, which the ether is going to be completely useless here. All right, and here it is. This is the moment. You have 10 seconds. What is the play? Tournament life is on the line. Down to seven health. It's not looking pretty. Have you made up your mind? Here we go. Useless here. Now we can play Shape Blast and Sip of Elixir to set up healing next turn. That's the line here, and then you grab the heal. You've got three more turns to kill him. Yeah, I think this that 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 turn was critical for Magneto. And if Magneto didn't play the the trial spirit, then Copper would not be able to afford the Valve champions. Wouldn't have enough favor. Well, like, he's playing Tracking oh. Bolt. Oh, and he's going to play and Tracking and Blizzard, and then Crystal Tech and Sip. It he'll be on eight next turn regardless. I, I think he takes the first C. Oh, you should definitely take the first C here, right? Because you're looking for C. No, no, no. He's he's going to heal. Okay, heal. Oh, going to heal right away. Okay, I guess that's okay. So he's playing around. There's nothing to play around. around. He's not. He's not. He's not dead. He's never dead there. Never dead, they say. Well, here's the thing. My opponent hits that Slayer button, and I didn't heal this past turn. I'm at seven. I drop down to five. He hits me with Blade of Sticks. I'm at two. Then I can't drop the healing because I'm at two, and I die to God Power. However, if I heal instead of playing the Helium, then I'm at six, but he has a Blade of Sticks. He smacks me in the face again. And God powers him down to one health, and then you can't heal in the turn after that. So yeah, you just lose the game if you do what they suggested. And there's that blade of sticks that I was concerned about. He smacks me in the face with it. Uses that God power. However, the key part of the line was that we could get the healing out this turn, and we already healed. Now, we just have... A two-turn clock to kill our opponent, but we've got 10 health on board, 4 in hand, 10 attack on board, 4 in hand. So basically all we gotta do, unbound flames, get through, and smack him in the face. There it is, he flashes and the GG's. Yeah, copper's line was better. Yeah, copper's saying he couldn't play the healing this turn. Yeah, I think that was definitely correct. Yeah. They realized it. And now, my opponent can smack me for two. Can't get through that helium. Doesn't run Vicious Rend. And that's it. We take down game number one. One game away. From moving on. Game number two, I go with Nature. We're going second against his aggro war. Now here we have Marshwalker, Pyre Shell Beetle, and a Black Jag. I was thinking I would love to get some Relic. We're going second. Faith Flame Blade would be huge. Uh, HP and kind of said the same thing on the cast that, you know, get rid of that Black Jag, look for the Relic. You said no, why would you get rid of that Black Jag? It's pretty nice. Lightning Strike, it's just too early for a Lightning Strike. 
Good luck. And immediately my opponent is going to slap down all kinds of creatures that a black jag would just have devoured. And the honestly, the Marsh Walker and the Pyre Shell Beetle don't really do too much here. So Fake Muse was 100% correct. Got to keep that black jag. We're about to get run over in the worst way possible. Our hand is just completely dead. He's just buffing his board. We are in trouble. Answer the call. We just got a power and... Feel real bad about our life decisions leading up to this moment. A black jag would have been really nice to have. He gets a little lucky here and high rolls the Vanguard getting that buff, which means he can just trade off. And if he can develop his board here, which he can in the best way possible, with a creature that gives even more creatures. Uh, so, strongest creature here is that Bloodguard and it's gonna spit out two more guys. Not looking good. Plan is maybe next turn we can wildfire and pray. Uh, he drops a 2 1 here. No. He plays another round and immediately we throw in the towel. Before we get into the final game of the best of three, gotta give a quick shout out to Aqua.xyz for sponsoring today's video. Aqua is the best marketplace for all your NFT gaming needs on IMX. You can go check out Aqua. They've got Gods Unchained, Immortal Game, Undead Blocks, Guild of Guardians, who has an upcoming mint. They have a nice seamless experience for any Gods Unchained cards you need to pick up. So make sure you check them out and show some love to Aqua. It's game three. I'm going first this time and we're playing nature again. Feeling good. Love my Pyre Shell Beetle. Love the Marsh Walker. Let's see if we can't high roll a great opening hand. We get the Fey Flame Blade and a Celestial Stag to boot. I mean, I'm just going to pip out this Pyre Shell Beetle, and we are feeling great right now. He could Canopy Barrage here, but that's about it. Anything he plays creature wise is going to get eaten up by that Fey Flame Blade. And. I'll happily eat that six damage. Trade our Marsh Walker. And we're quite happy. Now he could get a Faith Flame Blade and kill my Marsh Walker now, but we'd still be in the lead. And he does have the Faith Flame Blade. He confuses my Pyre Shell Beetle. See if that comes into play. There's a Relic Removal in the Sanctum. He throws his own Pyre Shell Beetle down. We both have the exact identical boards here, and he has more health than me. However, it's our turn. We smack this thing twice and use Low Hanging Fruit. I didn't want to set my Pyre Shell Beetle on fire, because then it wouldn't actually regen. I wouldn't burn, but it also would not gain health over time. So if he smacks it with his Fey Flame Blade, it would die, because it'd be at 2 health from smacking the 1-3. So we got a little board going on here. Next turn's a little awkward. We're going to have four mana. We have a Celestial Stag for three mana, but no creature to play along with it to make it proc. If we had a one mana creature off the top of the deck, that would be amazing. He buffs the Pyre Shell Beetle here. Interesting. And now he goes for it. Canopy Barrage for all the marbles. He misses. If he had hit the Pyre Shell Beetle... Could have been a different ball game. I'd only have a 1-2. Maybe he uses his god power instead of Grove Spirit, but he seems a little desperate. We do not top deck a 1-drop, so pretty much here we're looking at... We could Celestial Stag. We're also looking at that Oryx in the Sanctum. I do have enough favor for it. We could put out a Frontliner. It is a wild. However... I'm also looking at that Relic Removal, also looking at the card draw. And Celestial Stag feels more like a target that needs to be dealt with. Didn't feel too much different than the Oryx to me. Plus I get Blessed here, which means I could either get a Zombie, I could get tons of favor. 
Like the idea of denying him favor as well. Suddenly we've got a lot of options in the Sanctum and we took away all of his options. Definitely could have made an argument though for that frontliner. Wouldn't have hated that at all. Here he gets a high roll of all high rolls. That card is nasty and needs to be dealt with. But here I make a big misplay. Uh, this is right. actually a big 50-50. Oh, big 50 -50. oh he, has so he has to strike now. He has to strike this. Yeah. He can play Golden it Forcer here. It's, it's ugly, but you can play Golden Forcer here. You leave Rune Moth up? I feel like that's just losing every time. I never leave that card up. That card what? is just so good. Let me that. You, can, you can leave it up for one turn. But then you get like you get like lightning strike, rune of strength, like next turn, and it's and, just and then, and then you lightning strike. And it's just... Yeah, but, uh, I don't like leaving that up. I don't like leaving it up either. I mean, you can you can lightning strike GP here. All right, so if he's gonna buy the adventurer, so the adventurer, the adv that guy will let, let you get a random nature card, and you get staff of roots. So the order of operations here. Ooh, don't play the staff of roots. So what Copper basically missed is he could have bought from the Sanctum first, gotten the random card, and then used Staff of Roots to kill the 1-2, and oh, then... Now he has no answer for the Gilded Forcer that's going to go down right now. Yeah, but but what the, the line Copper missed the, this turn, I'm going to go ahead and rewind. I'm going to point it out because I think everyone is, is m missing this. So here, remember when the turn starts, he's going to end up basically attacking here first and then buying this adventurous adventurer from the sanctum however if he leads off with buying that he's drawing a card so he's getting getting a card from his deck which he does run staff of roots and he's generating a card from here which gives him potentially two options to deal with this board better and of course he top selects staff of roots which he can play remove this and then the three three takes out the one three so no, but, the order of the operations line, he was going for there is, is it though? Because I think he wanted to he wanted to play Guild Enforcer, right? So he well, wanted no, to if, if, if he if he if he wanted he going going for the fifty fifty with the beetle first was correct. Going yeah. for the fifty fifty with the beetle first was correct. He missed that. After he misses the okay. fifty fifty with the beetle, he needs to buy buy the Ambassador's adventurer before swinging with the stag. Oh yeah, 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 hundred okay. percent. Yeah, because because we see cause we see he draws he draws the staff of roots. As 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 the, as the turn goes on, he draws the staff of roots from his deck. He randomly generates a Chiron. But if he if he had the staff of roots at the beginning of the turn, he could have used the staff of roots to kill the one two, the stag to remove the one three. Hundred percent yeah. correct. And that now he's wasting a lightning strike, and a guild force is going to drop next turn. Yeah, that's that's usually what happens. But yeah, uh, as Copperfish <laughs> is saying in the chat, always draw first. You preach it, but don't do it. Nobody practices what they preach, so I preach everything on the stream. There you have it. One of the biggest misplays I could have made. I had to waste a lightning strike. Luckily, I do not get punished by a guild enforcer here. If he did drop a guild enforcer, I think Green Giant would have been a still decent answer to that. Uh, he would need a, he would need a lightning strike in order to deal with the Green Giant. I also have my own guild enforcer. It wouldn't have been the end of the world, but it certainly would not have helped me at all. Here we've got a bunch of options. We have a confused beetle, and we could try and trade that into the 3-3, and then potentially just use Staff of Roots to clean it up. However, this beetle is not my friend, and does not listen to do anything that I tell it to do. So now we have less options. I need to get that stag off the board. I do not trust stags. They have a habit of biting me in the butt. They generate random cards, and you never know what they could get. So then you're suddenly not playing against your opponent's deck. You're suddenly playing against literally every card in Gods Unchained, as they could be drawing, generating random cards that just completely destroy you in any given situation. So we throw down Chiron, get rid of his Relic. He trades out my Chiron. Next turn we're gonna have six mana, we can green giant. No chances Hog wanted to do that. And now we're in a really nice spot where Wildfire just looks 
So he can actually use GP, Wildfire, and Full Clear here if he would like. And I think that's the line I would go with. Because when else are you going to get this much value out of Wildfire? Your, your Relic finishes off one Jaguar. Yeah, so Copper finding the line that I like here. And Very I think line. this is correct. I can't do that. And the plant removes there. And you don't have to worry. This time, the beetle is going to go where it tells it t tells him to go. It listened. The beetle <laughs> listened, chat. The beetle had no choice. Doesn't count. Doesn't count if they don't have a choice. And my opponent looks like he's going to try and go wide. We do still have to worry about things like wildfire. Uh, we don't want to get punished by leaving a super wide board up. So I'm going to use my beetle to take out any of the creatures. Just any of the creatures and we'll be happy. Thanks, beetle. Thanks for that. So now he's got three creatures up, which is a little bit scary. We can either go green giant or guild enforcer plus marsh walker. I prefer this line as if he does have the lightning strike... Uh, we would just get wrecked with the green giants. This, at least we still have an extra creature up. He does have the lightning strike. There goes my guild enforcer. And... Now he can make a decent trade. Get rid of my 2-2. Two -two. Even could have made a trade and attempted to get rid of that marsh walker. Probably didn't want to do that. Use the marsh as a 1-1. One, one. Oh, I like just trading it off here. Still, the only thing I'm really concerned about is just like a wildfire. And him getting a super big regenerative board all of a sudden. He's back in the same out. position where he can pretty much play anything here and it's winning. Yeah, I think anything is winning here. Beetle takes out the lower. Close your eyes, Pepper. Just pick one. Got him. So, Magneto <laughs> tosses up the G Gs, concedes to the Jolly Green Giant, and Copper Pitch advances to the round of 64. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you like this type of format, let me know in the comments below. I'll upload future tournament rounds as well if you guys are interested. And until next time, thanks for watching. I, I thought he played that well. I mean, there were some things I would have done differently, but I thought overall he played that well.